Hello and welcome to the second in the Mission Planner Ardu Plane and Pixhawk Cube build series. Now I've already done an introduction. If you haven't already watched that, go and have a look at it. I'll put a link in the description to the entire series so that you can go and have a look. Apologies for the voice, a little bit croaky this morning, but hopefully you'll be able to get past that. As this video, we're going to do the basic stuff. We're going to uh, get the Pixhawk ready. We're going to flash it with Ardu plane and do the initial accelerometer and radio control calibrations just to make sure that it's all okay before we put it inside a plane. Now the process that we're going to follow along with here is going to be the same irrespective of the aircraft or the Pixhawk variant that you're going to pop it into. The setup for Ardu plane with Mission Planner has a number of steps and they are covered fantastically well in the Ardu Plane Wiki. Again, I'll put a link in the description. If you are looking to build something like this, then please go and check out the Wiki and have a full read of that first. The majority of the questions that I get asked on videos like this are actually already answered in the Wiki. So you can save yourself a lot of time and hassle by just spending half an hour over a cup of coffee and kind of going through each of the steps. Because that's all I'm really doing here, just in this basic series, going and setting everything up. Now, again, it doesn't really matter also which Pixhawk you're using. Uh, the Pixhawk variants, there's loads of different versions. I'm using this one here. This is the Pixhawk Cube. Uh, and that is the latest and greatest. It has multiple redundant IMU units. It has a heater inside. There's lots of different cube variants available with uh, F7 and H7 based processors. If you are looking to build a professional or prosumer based autonomous aerial vehicle, then the Pixhawk Cube is the one to go with. However, there are lots of other options about. And in the wiki, again, I'll put links to this in the description, it kind of goes through how to set all of those up from the old fashioned traditional Pixhawk to things like the Holibro, Pixhawk 4 Minis, through to some of the other stuff that I've used in other series on the channel, things like the Omnibus and the Matec F405 boards, which are very cheap and cheerful and very, very good options if you are tight for space or you are tight for budget. This video series has been made with the kind help and support of 3DXR. 3DXR.co.uk are based here in the UK, up in the northeast of England. And for me, they're the go-to place for anything that's Pixhawk, Mission Planner or RD Pilot related. They stock a full range of Pixhawk style flight controllers, a wide range of T-Motor, ESCs, motors and props, and also have a full range of sensors for your Pixhawk builds as well, particularly things like the Lightware and Bennywake LiDAR and rangefinders. In addition to all the Pixhawk technology for both multi-rotors and fixed wing, they also stock a full range of radio gear from people like FreeSky and others, and also stock a wide range of FPV equipment. So if you're looking for telemetry radio, super accurate GPS, sensors, Pixhawk, large-scale UAV systems, then check out 3DXR. There's a link in the description. Now, the first thing that we need to do is to download and install Mission Planner onto your computer. Now, if you have used Pixhawk or Mission Planner in the past, maybe you used to have APMs back in the day, then you know what? It's probably worthwhile you deleting that installation from your computer and reinstalling Mission Planner from scratch. The reason I say that is as part of a new uh, installation, it will update all the drivers. And that will make sure that whatever Pixhawk variant you are using, when you plug it in, it will be detected correctly. And then you can flash the right version of the firmware. Again, links in the description to download Mission Planner, install it onto your computer and you're ready. Next thing to do then I would recommend is to set up the model on your radio. Make sure the receiver is bound and plugged into the RC input of whichever Pixhawk variant that you're using. It just allows us to do some of the basic checks before we get too far down the road. Now to set up the radio, you're going to need the four main controls, aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder all set up. And you're also going to need a mode switch as well. Now all of this again is covered in the documentation. 
but I would recommend setting up your radio like this. Just because if you do it like this, then it kind of works straight out the box. You can map the different input channels as part of the setup, but if you have an opportunity to set up the radio like this, then this is the way to do it. Now, do not add in any mixing on the radio. If it's a V-tail, like the one that I'm trying to put this into for this series, or if it is a flying wing where you've mixed the aileron and elevators together, don't do any of that on the radio. Set it up like this because all of that mixing and cleverness is going to be done in the Ardu plane stuff when we install that in a moment. So set it up so that the aileron is the first channel, elevator is the second, throttle is the third, and rudder is the fourth, and add a three position switch to channel eight for the modes as well. The only other thing that you might have to do here is I would recommend reversing the elevator channel just because the way it works in Mission Planet is a bit odd. As you push the elevator to the top of the radio, you actually want the value at its lowest for that particular channel. And that will hopefully make sense in a moment when we get into Mission Planner. So set it up like this, bind it to the receiver, and let's look at putting our plane onto the Pixhawk. So the next job then is to flash the flight controller. Now I've uh, taken everything off here. The only thing I've left on is the GPS and I've kind of lined it up so the GPS arrow is at the top. Um, and apart from that, nothing else is plugged in because what we're going to do here is just going to flash it. Now the connector, the USB connector for the controller is here on the side. Um, now there are lots of different uh, boards that the controller can plug into. Uh, these carrier boards, this is the one that we obviously have here. There's a small version as well that I might have to swap this out to just because it looks like um, the room I've got inside the model is a little bit tight, but that's fine because that's why it's so great that the Ardu uh, pilot family supports so many different uh, different flight controllers. Now let's plug the USB cable in here. Now I've got Mission Planner running here in the background. We'll switch to that in a moment. But for now, let's just plug this little fella in. You'll see lots and lots of flashing lights on the Pixhawk. Now on the computer, what we're going to do is we're going to go into setup and then we are going to go install firmware. Now this is one of those things where if you haven't gone and updated it to the latest and greatest mission planner and installed everything, then do that before you go through this. That will guarantee that the right Pixhawk will be detected because there are lots of different ones in here. Now, going on to the desktop, here we have all of the different options that we've got inside mission planner. So you can see here, we can have it for a rover, we can have it for plane, copter, all the different multi-rotors, uh, even a sub here in the top right-hand corner. We need to choose the one that we're gonna use. Now we're obviously going to use plane, so I'm going to click on that first, and it'll say, are you sure you want to upload plane 4.0.5 official? We're gonna click on yes. Now, uh, more than one choice exists platform now we are going to go cube black because that's what it is. Um, if it, not sure, double check with the documentation and it's going to then upload the firmware. So it's gonna download the firmware from the internet. We're not moving anything. We're just letting it all sit here. And then it's gonna look for the heartbeat. It's gonna say, please unplug the board and press okay and plug back in. Uh, so we're going to unplug it. Now what's happened, it's forced the bootloader here. So we're gonna click okay, and I'm gonna click it, push it back in. And now when it comes back up, it should be erased, first of all, there it goes. And then it should start to flash everything. So there it is now going across on to the Pixhawk. So again, this is pretty easy and straightforward. I'm not speeding this up so that you can see exactly how long it takes. Uh, the only thing I will be careful of is don't plug your USB cable into your computer via a hub or something else. I will always do it like I've got it here. Plug it directly into your PC. Just coming to the end. Now, if I had the buzzer installed on here, then it would uh, give a little trilling noise to let me know that it had finished. 
but we're just waiting for all the lights to continue flashing. If you're not sure, just give it kind of uh, five, six seconds like I am here, and then you should be good. Now we have it flashed with the latest and greatest version, but nothing is configured. So we're going to connect to it to make sure that everything is all working. So we're going to click on the down button here, and we're going to select the only COM device that's currently here. Make sure it's set to 115200 in the top right hand corner, and we're going to click on connect. It's going to say Mavlink connected. So now here we are, we're all connected, and everything appears to be working. If I lift the nose of the Ardu pilot, uh, the Pixhawk, then we can see it all moving. Even though we're indoors, we can actually see it has a GPS lock. So we're in really, really good shape. However, there are a load of things that we need to do. And that is all in the setup tab in the mandatory hardware. And what we need to do is we need to kind of work our way down this list, starting at the very top. So let's do that next. We're gonna click on accelerometer calibration. Uh, now we'll calibrate level at the very end of the process when it's all installed in the model, but for now we'll calibrate the accelerometer. So what we need to do is click on calibrate accelerometer. It'll say level your autopilot and uh, click any key. So we're going to place the vehicle level, click when done. It's going to say, place your vehicle on the left. Now we know that was the nose. Uh, this can be quite handy to have a little box or something to pop it onto. So we're going to put it onto the left, click when done. We're going to put it onto the right. This can be a little bit tricky because of the USB cable. Click when done. Place it nose down. Click when done, place it nose up. I might take out my RC cable for this. You need to keep it as still as you can while you're doing this. Click when done, place it on its back. So it's going to have to sit like that. Click when done. Calibration is successful. So that is Brill. Now with a compass calibration, We'll do that bit next, and uh, there's loads of different ways you can do it, but we're just going to click on Live Calibration. And it says, please click OK and move the autopilot around in all axes in a circular motion. And we're just going to whiz it about. And this is why we have tried to line up the compass with the Pixhawk for this, so that they are both pointing in the same direction, and we get it all to work. There we go. And that's all worked so we're going to click on OK. So now we are on to radio calibration so this is the bit where we need to install the radio receiver and do that piece next. So here's the radio with the model all set as I showed before the only extra thing I've done is connected my receiver via a little cable the S bus input to the RC in that's going to be powered when we connect up the USB cable. It's the only part one of the set of pins at the back of the Pixhawk that is, so you need to be aware of that. We'll talk more about power and uh, servos and things in the next video. So, with everything powered, receivers on, it's bound, Pixhawk is booting, we are in great shape. Now we're ready to do the radio calibration. So, back in Mission Planner, make sure you have the right COM port selected and click on connect and then all the information will start to come back into Mission Planner for us to do the next step. Now this process is relatively straightforward, you're just going to have to go through it. We may have to revisit it when it's all in the model, but doing it here means that we don't get into too much trouble. So in Mission Planner, when everything has been copied across, if we just jump back into the Setup tab, go into Mandatory Hardware, we can see all the things. Now we've done the accelerometer calibration, we did the compass, it's time for the radio. Now as I move the controls, you'll see everything move in here. Uh, with the exception of the elevator or pitch control, everything moves in the direction you'd expect. Push the rudder to the right, the rudder value goes to the top position. Push it to the left, it goes down. Similarly, with the throttle, push the throttle high, the throttle value goes high, drop it to its lowest position, it drops to the low channel value. So everything is the right way round, as you'd expect. 
with the exception of the pitch control and that's why we reversed it in the previous step but everything is matching because we did those pieces now if i flick the modes we can see that it's actually channel 8 that's moving for the mode setup so we'll come back to that in a little bit if we did need to reverse any of these that were going in the wrong direction we could click the little reverse buttons here but we don't need to do that so i'm going to click on calibrate radio it's going to tell us we need to move everything to their limits so we're going to click on ok and then we'll start moving all the radio controls around you can see the little red line starting to appear at the maximum and minimum positions just take your time don't use excessive force just run through all the controls and the mode switch and put them to their maximum position when you're finished and you're happy click OK confirm everything is OK it's going to ask you to put the throttle in the low position all the middle everything else in the middle channel positions and then click OK again and then it'll save those settings and the calibration for the radio is done. So we've actually got quite a long way here and in the next video we'll be ready to pop this into a plane. So in this video we've gone from a brand new Pixhawk that doesn't have anything on it. It's now flashed. We have done the accelerometer calibration. We have also done the uh, compass calibration and we've done the radio calibration as well. We know that all those pieces are working and we're in good shape. Now one of the things you notice probably when I was doing the compass calibration is there were three compasses running at the same time. And this is one of the things why the Cube is such a good choice if you are interested in doing kind of a professional or a bulletproof build because there are lots of redundancies again if you were setting up another kind of pixhawk model uh, then it probably wouldn't look exactly the same there'd be the same kind of live calibration things moving around but you might not have had all three running at the same time but now we are in good shape for the next video so join me in that one where we'll actually start putting things inside the fixed wing model and making sure that everything all works connecting servos connecting the power making the control surfaces move in the right direction and the correction from the Ardu pilot technology correcting in the right direction as well so join me in the next video where we'll go through all that setup Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.